Hey, welcome to a new video. It's time to check 5 more iconic homologation cars. Some of them are your recommendations from the last video. Keep in mind, we have one more episode to come to finish this series, so subscribe if you don't want to miss it. In this video, I show you 4 European and a Japanese car. All of them are true motorsport icons from different eras and divisions. Similar to the last episode, we have race cars from DTM, WRC and Le Mans. Let's start with the British legend. Ford Sierra RS500 Cosworth. Ford originally designed the Sierra RS to serve as a Group A homologation special for touring car racing. It was developed alongside another icon, the RS200. With this lineup, Ford was preparing for a motorsport success in the second half of the 80s. To qualify for Group A, 5000 examples of the Sierra RS had to be produced before the model could go racing. The Sierra Cosworth immediately proved itself by competing against BMW M3, Mercedes 190e and the Alfa Romeo 75 Turbo. However, at this stage BMW clearly had the edge. According to the Group A and the B evolution rule, Manufacturers were allowed to produce updated variants of their homologated vehicles every 12 months. To qualify, 500 Evolution road cars had to be built. Thanks to this rule, the Sierra RS500 Cosworth was born. All 500 cars were built in right hand drive and the RS500 500 was offered exclusively in the UK. Despite the list price that was around 25% higher than the standard Sierra Cosworth, it sold out quickly. Interesting fact, in early 2023, a Sierra RS was sold for nearly 600,000 pounds. Listen to this beautiful sound. <laughs> Nissan R390 GT1 the sole purpose of this one-off road legal R390 was to meet the GT class homologation rules to be able to compete at Le Mans in the late 90s. According to the rules, each car had to have at least one road legal version to enter the 1998 season. Most of the cars like the Toyota GT1, Porsche 911 GT1 and the Nissan R390 were kept by the manufacturer and never been sold. The street version featured the same 3.5 liter twin turbo V8 engine as the race car in a slightly detuned state. The performance of the R390 is outstanding even with today's standards. Keep in mind it was built in 1998. It does 0-100 km in 3.9 seconds and the rumor top speed is over 350 km an hour. As I mentioned before it's a one-off. The only original car is managed by the Nissan Heritage Collection. Later, a second road legal R390 was converted from a race car in France. The conversion of this car took two years and it was claimed to retain 95% of its original race car parts. Listen to its sound. Dyer Porsche 962 LM. It was 1994 when the Dyer Racing 962 LMs took part in Le Mans and took the overall victory right off the bat. The 962 LM won too many titles to mention. The most prestigious ones are the 24 hour of Le Mans and the 24 hour of Daytona. Originally, it was meant to be a civilized street version of the most famous Group C car in history. According to the original brochure, there was no limit to comfort. You could order a DVD player with a surround sound system, navigation and AC. The 962 LM got a completely new Kevlar bodywork and a comfortable interior compared to the race car. The 962 LM is a crazy car in every aspect. Its performance is unbelievable for a car from the early 90s. The 3 liter twin turbo flat 6 puts out 730 horsepower combined with the low curb weight, a little over 1.1 tons, you get a 2.6 second 0 to 100 km and a top speed over 400 km an hour. 
Michelin had to develop a special tire only for this car, which was the only homologated tire for a speed of over 400 km an hour at the time. Yes, it sounds insane. Listen. Lancia Stratos The Lancia Stratos Zero was introduced by Bertone at the 1970 Turin Motor Show. It was presented as a mid-engine sports car project. In 1971 the Stratos reached its final form and luckily they could strike a deal with Ferrari to use the Dino's V6 engine. According to Group 4 rules they had to produce 500 road legal cars to be able to compete. Lancia started racing before the homologation was obtained so they could test and fine-tune the Stratos. Finally, in 1974, Lancia received the green light from FIA and started its official rally career by taking the overall victory. Followed by many more team and driver championship victories, the Stratos was one of the most successful rally cars of the era. Nowadays, the Stratos Stradale is a sought-after collector's car. Back in the day, things were different. Since the whole car was designed for rallies, it wasn't comfortable or fuel efficient, which made it hard to sell. Listen to the sweet symphony of this NA V6. Mercedes 190E EVO 2 The EVO 2 was unveiled in March 1990 at the Geneva Motor Show. Due to the success of the earlier Evolution model, it is said that all 502 units had been sold before the event. The EVO 2 featured a radical body kit with large adjustable rear wing, rear window spoiler and 17-inch alloy rims with widened wheel arches. It was aerodynamic and had been wind tunnel tested to reduce drag. It made its racing debut in DTM at the Nürburgring in 1990, finishing third. Two years later, the EVO 2 took first, second and third places. Unfortunately, this was the last year for the 190E to compete due to the change of regulations. The EVO 2 not just looks, but sounds crazy. Listen. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed watching these true motorsport icons and learned something new today. If you like the content, please like, share and subscribe. See you next time.